accompanied a painting by Claude Monet, which is one of a series of more than a half a dozen canvases, uh, taking the subject of Gare Saint Lazare, which is a train station in Paris. It dates to about the winter of 1876-1877, just a few years after the first Impressionist exhibition. And Monet was, had been living in Argenteuil, which was a suburb of Paris, and of course he would have taken the train there and back as a typical suburban dweller into the city, and so this whole phenomenon of commuter railways into the city. It's a very modern idea. And very, right, visiting, you know, wanting to live in the countryside but working in the city. And so, you know, Paris had been reno recently renovated during the Second Empire by Baron Haussmann. And these train stations were new, the boulevards were new. So this was really this epitome of the modern, of the new, of the industrial. But it's so radical. I mean, we think of Monet as painting water lilies. We think of him painting the pastoral suburban landscape. But here, what could be more gritty than these cold burning, you know, steam engines. Yeah, I mean, even before, I mean, Monet had been in Argentoy and he had painted landscapes, but he had chimneys in the background or modern railway bridges or elements of modern life, but here he's just completely embracing the sort of gritty ickiness of and modernism. Yet, if you look at the composition of the painting, it's actually not so different from a traditional landscape painting. If you look back at the canvases of, say, Claude, you know, who's got trees framing uh, this, 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 um, this, this movement, sort of this visual, yeah, on the other side exactly, here. this visual movement going back into space, and also these diagonal, that's right, these diagonal lines that recede and carry our eye back. But the painting is in intensely flat, despite. Well, because of, the, because of the emphasis on surface, and on especially. Paint. And you know what's so interesting? If you look at this canvas, um, you know, you have this locomotive that's actually moving into, this, into the station mm -hmm. under, this, under the, yeah. uh, this enormous iron grid work. And what could be more sub substantive, what could be more substantial than an iron locomotive? And yet, because of the way that the steam is painted, it's actually beginning to obliterate and, in a sense, dissolve the solidity of the locomotive of this mass of iron. And it's Monet exactly his, his intent, which is to focus on the play of light and the play of color. And what could be more sort of a wonderful space to do that than in this entrapped space where the steam, where these droplets of water play against the sunlight that are coming through the windows above? Right. So Monet is, is thinking about the, the surface and how that surface is flickering and the colors that are changing on the surface, and he's not thinking so much the way an academic painter would have thought about, you know, creating a foreshortened object in space, um, you know, creating perspective lines with it and modeling it and giving it solidity. And so really, actually, if, if we look at this detail, there actually are no lines or contours to the object, no sense of traditional modeling at all. And the surface is, is incredibly painterly and almost abstract. Sometimes the word scumbled is used. And you know what's interesting? Because you can compare the way the Monet is completely removing line, virtually, from this canvas with some of the other painters who, who worked in this area at the same time. I'm thinking about a painting by Kaibot, who is a contemporary of Monet's. This is actually uh, a bridge which is just over the train tracks that we saw Monet painting just a moment ago. And here, everything is so linear and crisp and clean and clarified. And in fact, the linear perspective is very intense. Right, it's a sort of uh, over dramatized linear perspective, but there is an illusion of, a real illusion of space here, which Monet kind of denies us. And everything is so, I mean, that, that iron work looks like iron work. It's so there. And whereas, heavy. Whereas in Monet, we see everything just dissipating, the steam, everything becomes just pure light, just pure color. Yeah. And we have, you know, we have a sense here of a street, of an urban street, of, of people passing each other, of the pace of modern life. Um, and, of course, Manet did that as well in his painting of the railway, that sort of passing people on the street. And this is the same location, the same isn't location. it? Right. Yeah, this is looking down onto those train tracks. Exactly. And we could look for a moment... At this the real train station. Here it is. This is what it looks like today. The photograph of it, at right. least. Um, and so, so really, I mean, it's, 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 not a, it's not a pretty place. No, not at all. And yet Monet chose to make this luminous and just an extraordinary ex expression of the beauty of modern urban life. Here's a map of the train station just below. We're looking at the roofs of the train station. Um, just past that, the railway, tr the railway tracks that we were looking at. And then past that, the bridge uh, that we saw the Kaibat from. And of course, these boulevards that had been recently built by Baron Haussmann as Which part of really the modern Paris. Which had really through the city, but creating this modern bourgeois society, really. That is exactly what Monet is painting, and Manet too. So, if we go back to this canvas then, what we're, see what we're seeing is this beautiful expression of, of Impressionism.